Okay. I swear it said live though. It should say live. It's live on custom live streaming service. So I hope we're not live because we're just embarrassing ourselves. If we <laughs> Here we go. We are live on Facebook. So good evening, Facebook. It's great to spend some time with you again. My name is Stephen McInerney. This is Jane Ahern, and we are your evenings light entertainment and education. So the idea of Power Hour is to be able to put some of the um, some of the the, the the truths, bring them to the surface, and the things that are incorrect with regards to information we're given about your health and well-being, um, put them to bed and forget about them and shut them in a the drawer somewhere so we don't uh, don't have those nasty little things coming out again. But Tonight we're going to be graced with Jane Ahern's presence, so that's fantastic. How are you doing, Jane? Good, good. Feeling good. All healthy. <laughs> How's life in isolation? Fine, actually. I mean, um, homeschooling is different, but uh, my daughter is absolutely loving it, not wanting to go back to school. Um, I'm still managing to get out uh, to go for a run, so thankfully the weather's been good. So that's been my sanity throughout um but actually yeah i haven't found it too bad but getting a little bit uh bored and eager, eager to get back into london more <laughs> exactly. exactly good so tonight we're going to be talking about um the role of nutrition um in health and well-being but also in sports as well so jane why is um sports nutrition and nutrition as a whole um it's, it's really popular isn't it now there's lots of lots of talk about nutrition and people are starting to understand what's going on why the sudden shift? Um, I think it's, you know, the, there's been a lot of, um, you know, pressure put on sort of um, health organizations, um, but any any kind of place that uh, devises food products or creates foods to try and bring sort of health factor into it. Um, the importance of exercise and keeping fit and healthy along with um, including healthy foods in your diet and being conscious about how much energy you're consuming in terms of calories um, has become probably popular due to um, an increase in obesity and just unhealthy lifestyles and disease. Um, but see, it seems that people have really responded to it well. More and more people are exercising, joining gyms and also uh, doing outdoor exercise as well, which is great and trying to incorporate uh, kind of healthier eating habits and um, more balanced foods into their diet. Do you think people, do it, do you think people are doing it because of fear though? Because they, I'm quite, quite interested in that people do things because of fear. It's like, a, like it, when has it never been, when has it ever been healthy to eat unhealthily? Why have people suddenly shifted? Do you think it's fear that's driving that? Um, I think there is an element of fear. I think that fear not only of um, uh, jeopardizing your health, uh, fear of um, perhaps um, getting a, you know, a body image that you're not um, happy with. So people don't want to be unhealthy. They don't want to um, gain too much weight. Um, and they also, you know, look especially on social media as well that has an impact looking at people who look ideal and perfect despite all the uh, photoshopping we know about we kind of strive for that as well um so there is definitely an element of fear not only from sort of health but also image um and sort of wanting to not just be healthy but also be sort of aesthetically pleasing so there's definitely been a huge shift in that yeah yeah it's interesting do you, do you find that has an impact on the the um, the likelihood of someone to be able to stick to that because once they feel a little bit better about themselves and the fear is gone do you think the the habits stick long enough for it to make a long-term health difference in terms of the like these trends and things that you see coming along because uh, there was atkins a couple of months ago now there's ketogenic diets and there's lots of different like fatty diets and there's little old me just have my plain old boring like meat and two veg and all that kind of stuff that i'm doing um, one meal a day, one meal a day, that's a, um, intermittent fasting, so all of a sudden that's really popular, that's how I live my life, one meal a day, all of a sudden it's really popular and everyone else is doing it, who would have known that I was right all along about intermittent fasting, at least this month anyway, but 
you think people don't stick to things because the, the motivation isn't really there. So they're doing it because of something else or, or someone else telling them to do it or they've seen something or read something or the Kardashians are suddenly eating carrots or rubbing grease in their hair and eating lollipops it. Lollipops and, and things like that, yeah. <laughs> the Kardashian lollipops, yeah. Yeah, so what was it? The, they, I think recently they were advertising, or a while ago, they were advertising uh, like health lollipops or like lollipop. appetite suppressant lolly, lollipops, which I would yeah. be um, strongly against, really, uh, you know, unless they were absolutely necessary if someone was um, really struggling with their appetite. Sorry? It works because if you've got a lollipop in your mouth and you've got the sugar from that, surely you probably don't want to eat anything else at the same time. So, I. If it's I like, a couple of grams of sugar versus 20 grams of sugar that you could be eating at the same time there might be some rationale in that, that um kardashian kardashianism i'm not sure exactly what ingredients it was or whether it was sugar that was the main component to suppress appetite um but i guess having a sugar hit uh, would maybe give you that energy in your body might think, oh, okay, you know, my blood sugar is good and maybe for a time it might sustain you. But overall, I don't think it's a healthy approach. Having an apple might be a bit better. Um, yeah. But yeah, in terms of going back to the sort of fad diets, um, whether it's a motivational um, thing or people reach their goal and then they go back to their old eating habits. Um, but a lot of the time, these diet trends are devised based on you know, research that has, you know, observed, okay, yeah, if you, if you follow this, we found that the majority of people in this trial lost weight, et cetera, et cetera. And it's taken from this sort of small finding in maybe multiple studies and blown into this miraculous, new, wonderful way that you, you can, as I say, either lose weight or get really buff. Um, and when people go on these things, they're all gung ho, but that might be so far removed from your regular routine i'm not saying it's a change in the right direction but it just might be too extreme and when we feel fatigued which is usually if we do go on a calorie deficit you probably are going to experience um it can change your mood um you'll feel you know deprived of, of, of your sugar <laughs> and, and that and unfortunately we end up feeling kind of a lack of motivation and disappointment in ourselves and then oh why do I bother and then we go back to the other extreme so finding something more individualized and suitable for you as an individual um you know can work so you were saying that you only eat one meal a day because of intermittent fasting no 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 <laughs> you think am I the type of person that follows other people All right. I'm absolutely different to other people so if they zig, I zag, basically. So I've, I've just done what I thought was right because I listened to my body and it happened to be like, I'm only hungry once a day because I'm pretty busy the rest of the time. So I eat once a day. I might have a little snack occasionally, but it's not yeah. like, you know, I'm going to rock my and world with that. Work for people. I think there's a lot of merit in the idea of listening to your body and really considering, as I say, whether you're hungry or not. Intermittent fasting can be, has had wonderful uh, benefits, particularly for people with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetic, pre because um, it can help to improve insulin sensitivity, um, which we are finding now more and more, especially with obesity and type 2 diabetes is on the rise, um, or insulin resistance is on the rise. Um, so that's why that became popular. Uh, but again, if you do intermittent fasting, just as, as an example, incorrectly it then can lead to i'm so starving and now i'm just going to eat neat 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 and so kind of binging which again one extreme to the other what was what, i'm interested in this now so bin, binging what what's what would count as binging like binging is basically overeating um so having 2000 calories or or 1500 to 2000 calories sort of in one meal because you're so hungry and eating fast usually comes with binge eating so high calorie so calorie dense foods um in just high quantities 
to the point yeah. that you're absolutely stuffed. You feel, oh my gosh, I can't move afterwards. Um, so just basically too much um, and really high in calories. You couldn't really yeah. eat on salad. So, I mean, if you had salad leaves, you're not going to do that. But binge eating, as I say, it's a more high, high fat, high carbohydrate, high sugar, lots and lots and lots of it. So that's what I would qualify as binge eating. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't do that, so I'm okay. <laughs> Your mind's at ease, yeah. Go back to what I said, eat when I'm hungry. What, what is it with people? Why don't they just eat when they're hungry? Do, do people get hungry all the time? I think, um, I, I mean, a lot of what I'm hearing now, especially um, during the lockdown, um, it can be boredom. Um, it can be thirst. So sometimes we confuse the feeling of hunger um, or the feeling of thirst with the feeling of hunger. We think we're hungry, um, but maybe a simple thing to do is have a, a glass of water or a non-sugary drink. And if afterwards and you're like, no, yeah, I'm definitely hungry, then you know you're hungry. Give it some time to kind of go through. Um, even watching my daughter, I've seen her ask repeatedly, you know, uh, can I have something to eat? I'm hungry, but it's never, you know, something sensible. It's can I have a uh, a biscuit or, um, you know, Ritz crackers she likes. And, you know, they're not the worst, but you don't really want them having them. They're, you know, salt and hydrogenated fats and they're not good. So I try to pass her off with fruit, which she usually accepts. But even then it's like, mm, there's no real pleasure in, in that. It's almost like your body sort of wanting to focus on something and, and sort of find a way to kind of pass the boredom. So reaching for um, quick fixes tends to be uh, what happens. But yeah, you're right. People don't eat necessarily when they're hungry. Snacking seems to be uh, a trend in itself. Why, why do you, um, I know this is slightly off topic, um, but it probably applies to sports nutrition as well, because I guess the, I know I've been, I've been out for a run, you come home, I, it's like toast and butter. If I'm hungry and I'm starving after a run, toast and butter. Why is that? I crave for it. Absolutely love it. I never have uh, toast or butter any other time. But for some reason, after I run or do intense exercise, I have to come home and have a slice of toast and a bit of butter. But I hate the stuff. Why is it? You hate it, but you crave it. Well, I think the reason you're craving it after a long run, particularly if you haven't eaten beforehand, but your body oh, yes. will to replace um, its glycogen stores. So you want your carbohydrate after um, you run. And I think it's essential. This is what people should do. You know, you should replace them um, because in, in order to kind of aid recovery, that's what you need to do. You don't want your body to be kind of struggling then to get through the rest of the day with kind of low glycogen stores. Um, the fat in um, the butter could either be, um, I don't know if you necessarily want to replace your fat stores, but toast is not going to taste great on its own. So it could just be a nice accompaniment to, to the toast. And it's got, again, high energy replacing those calories you just burned off. I think, I guess it's quite simple, relatively simple food, isn't it? Because they're not, not that complex in terms of the carbohydrate, not that complex in terms of the fat that you've got there as well. So I wonder if it's just, I've always wondered why I, uh, well, crazy. That's strange. Crazy. It's just an easy way to replenish it, and it's, yeah, your your body's asking for the right thing. It's like you've you've depleted me. Now you need to replenish me. So toast and butter's fine after a big run. <laughs> Actually, it makes me toast and butter. That's what it, <laughs> it was like. I hate it. Is, I it, is it butter or spread? Can I ask? Uh, butter. We don't have spread in the house, Jane. Good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no spreads. Again, that's another uh, food on the market that for a long time was uh, viewed as a, a health food in terms of cholesterol, but we're finding uh, new things nowadays. So, yeah, if people are interested, try and avoid the spreads. You're actually better off having butter, but again, not too much because of the saturated fat content. But, yeah, yeah, nice. So we've got a question. Um, Saha says she has a, a similar candidate in her house. So I guess that refers to the... Um, the, uh, the magic trick that mum does that she magically turns cream crackers into an apple. How do you get away with that? 
how do I get away with it? Well, I mean, Impressive well, being at home has been has been great in terms of I can monitor everything she's having. Um, she's seven, so she's old enough to come down in the morning if she wants to and make some cereal. Um, but I, I am always running home to her the importance of healthy eating, and maybe she'll hate me for it when she's older. Um, but I do try and tell her why it's important and why she needs to look after her body. Now I'm very fortunate that my child likes fruit. So it, it's not always an easy answer to say, oh, well, you know, just, just ask them to have this instead. Because if you do have fussy eaters or, you know, children can at times throw tantrums because they really want the, the sweet. Um, but just allowing them to know, like you are having lunch or dinner very soon. If you have things like these snacks, um, you're only going to, you know, satisfy yourself and then you're not going to be that hungry for your nice, healthy, healthy meal. And um, another way to do it is to sort of say you can have this reward, um, you know, once a day. So not even a reward, but a treat. I don't like to kind of reward kids with food either, but um, I don't see any harm in having the odd treat. But um, yeah, I think always, always give it a shot. Try and suggest something a little bit healthier. Um, another way you can do it, and I have a, a few videos on this as well, is try and involve the child in um, making healthy snacks with you. I know this can seem time consuming for some people, but um, I will be putting a video up on making healthy flapjacks with your kids. So again, they've got oats, um, some natural sugars in there and fruits. Um, and also fruit and marshmallow kebabs I made a while ago, and also smoothies and turning the smoothies into ice lollies. So if your children are really against the idea of eating an apple or eating berries instead of their snacks, try and find ways to make them a bit more fun and make them feel like they're having a treat, but actually you're, you're kind of tricking them into having um, healthier options. But definitely always don't go for the, the quick snacks and definitely keep the snacks where they can't get to them. Yeah. If they can get them, they will take them without you knowing. <laughs> I brought the kids a little drone that I saw. You know how these little things come up on Facebook and Instagram? So one of the things that came up, I'm obsessed with drones. I don't know what it is. I think I just love flying for some reason. So I bought the kids a drone small drone about 40 50 quid i thought oh, what the hell lockdown let's give them something entertaining to play with so i bought it i put it right up on top of this shelf and i came back in and one of them was trying to climb up on the shelf and it's it's high i almost swore then it's high these kids are <laughs> six and yeah. six and eight years old off of the kitchen kitchen cabinet to get a sink they're, they're, they're nimble, these kids need to watch yeah. out. No, they will get them and there needs to be very, I mean, there's a strict rule in my house about the snacks. They're in the garage, in the cupboard, in a box. And I always say, I know how many packets of this and I know how many, you know, I know what's there. So if I find out, then you're in trouble. Um, but allowing them to have one, maybe two treats per day is okay. But um as I say, I've got plenty of ideas and recipes to try and uh, um, encourage them to kind of get involved in it. Because once they feel they've made it, then they think it's fabulous. So yeah. that's kind of a good tip for getting to help. But yeah, they will get hide the snacks. Don't let don't let them be accessible because they're they will get into them. Trust me, <laughs> as we all know. Do you think that sometimes kids like high energy things because they're, they're going through a huge period of development, aren't they? When they're between the age of kind of three, four years old and eight or nine years old, their, their bodies are massively changing, their brains are getting bigger. Do you think some of it is because they've got a, a need for the high energy intake or what, what do you think drives this? Because their brain must be telling them sugar, sugar, sugar. Because it's, it's, it needs it, right? Absolutely. I think, I mean, we've, we've been programmed from the day we're born to kind of crave uh, sweet and glucose. It's, it's our most efficient form of energy, breast milk and formula are sweet. And that's why, um, because that is, you know, the, what we kind of get our energy from or the easiest way we can do it. Um, I find even if you look at children, they can eat 
quite a considerable amount of sugar and not gain weight at times if they're active. So usually kids will, you know, allow them to, to run around. You know, we sort of said, oh, they know they're bouncing off the walls because of the sugar. They might just be bouncing off the walls because of the children. Um, they have a lot more um, uh, mitochondria than we have and therefore they will sort of have a natural more um, source of, of sort of energy readily available. So that's why they do uh, bounce around. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're constantly growing. They sleep more than we do. Um, therefore, they're more able, you know, provided that they um, don't have any other underlying conditions, more able to sort of process nutrients um, in many ways compared uh, to adults, so long as the, you know, they don't have the same stress levels we have um, psychologically, well, hopefully anyway, um, I'm talking in general here. Um, but yeah, I think so long as they're not overeating and having huge amounts of calories um, through lots and lots of sugar and fat, um, you will find that children will be able to utilize um, the, the energy that they're intaking because they are so active, or at least they should be, and they should be encouraged to be very active. <laughs> so we're going to get back to the topic of sports nutrition, so I know that's what we're okay. talking about. Yeah. Saha's got a very interesting question, but I like to think of, of uh, kids as being athletes, don't you? Because they've got that high energy demand, that constant drive, the, the kind of goal orientated. I think that's something that we sometimes lose as adults, isn't it? So, I think we'll come back to that. It's interesting. But Saha was asking, um, can I ask what your favourite breakfast ideas are for children? I'm always looking at different ideas, Saha says. Breakfast, breakfast ideas for children. Um, sorry? 1980s. 1980s. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm proud to say, Frosties was a staple breakfast choice of my parents. Well, we don't have Frosties in my house, but it, it essentially for, for that to answer that, it, it really depends because I do meet a lot of fussy eaters, but um, things, what can be difficult is trying to force children to eat um, types of breakfast that they don't enjoy. They should really enjoy the food. You want them to like mealtime, sit and eat. Um, if Frosties is the only thing that they want, perhaps try and even filter down the sugar content by mixing the Frosties with plain cornflakes, just at least to, to bring that down. But ideally, um, you know, mixing it up, um, eggs, on toast, so boiled egg and soldiers is always a nice one. Again, it's sort of fun for them if they enjoy yeah. eggs. Um, but little breakfast um, pancakes I sometimes make, so like banana pancakes, things like that with um, oats in them as well. So, but one of the things, yeah, I really like to make, um, if you don't have time to actually make the batter and stuff, you can buy um, pancakes that are made from oats in, in, in the shop. Um, and I find my daughter loves them because she thinks she's having like a crepe, but it's actually got oats in it. And um, as I say, a little bit of maple syrup and some lemon is good. But um, the banana pancakes don't always go down as great, but ideally that is what I would uh, give um, my daughter. So banana pancakes that are made with cottage cheese and oats and a bit of flour and uh, mashed up banana and eggs, high protein, um, high fiber, a good source of carbohydrate and um, season nicely. Stephen, are you still there? You're very still. <laughs> Sorry, Facebook, if I'm just talking to air. Screen's frozen. <laughs> 